morning everyone welcome to part 1 of the lecture 3 under module 2 so in this lecture we will practice few example on the topic covered in this module so if you recall our discussion so at the beginning of this module we discuss about the concept of solid and the liquid fuels in that first we discuss about the solid fuel further we discuss about the characteristics of solid fuel followed by the structural composition of the solid fuel while in the liquid fuels we discuss about the sources of liquid fuel followed by characteristics of liquid fuel further we discuss about the fuel component characteristics so here in this lecture we will practice few example on some of the topics covered in this module 2 so let us begin with the first example so this example is based on the concept of H by C ratio and O by C ratio. So, this particular concept we discuss while discussing the solid fuel and its characteristics. So, if you remember uh, in the solid fuel we discuss about the estimation of the ultimate analysis of solid fuel and why it is essential. So, here in this example, we will be using this particular concept to just compare the H by C ratio and the O by C ratio of these two fuel samples and we will try to present their general formula in the form of CHO. As per the statement of example, an ultimate analysis of wood biomass and the bituminous coal sample by weight percent is given as follows. So, the wood biomass it contains around 49 percent of carbon, 7 percent hydrogen, 0.1 percent nitrogen, 0.1 percent sulfur and 44 percent oxygen. While the bituminous coal contains around 85 percent carbon, 5 percent hydrogen, 0.9 percent nitrogen. 1 percent sulfur and 9 percent oxygen by weight. So, with this given data, we will try to just estimate the H by C ratio and O by C ratio of these two given fuel sample and then we will just try to represent their general formula in the form of CHO. So, let us begin with the solution of this example. So, if you remember this particular topic when we discuss about this H by C ratio and the O by C ratio, the H by C ratio and O by C ratios are presented as molar ratios of the elements. So, for this let us first consider X and MW be the weight percent and molecular weights of respective elements. So, for woody biomass, first of all we will try to solve this example for the woody biomass and similarly we will try to solid for the bituminous coal as well. So, for OD biomass, if you have to represent this H by C ratio in the form of molar ratios, then weight of the hydrogen in the OD biomass divided by the molecular weight of hydrogen and then percentage weight of 
because this is the ratio of H by C. So, this term represents the molar ratio of hydrogen divided by the molar ratio of carbon that is percentage weight of carbon by its molecular weight. Now, we know the percentage weight of hydrogen in the woody biomass which is given as 7 percent and the hydrogen uh, we know the molecular weight. Similarly, for the carbon the value is given as 49 and if you see the molecular weight of carbon. So, once you solve this term, so we will get the answer in the form of. So, the H by C ratio for the woody biomass is 1.71. So, similarly, we will just try to find out the O by C ratio for the woody biomass. So, the O by C ratio again it is weight percent of oxygen by its molecular weight and weight percent of carbon divided by its molecular weight and here the weight percent of oxygen is given as 44 percent in the woody biomass and the molecular weight as 16 we know and then the percent of carbon it is 49 by 12. So, once we solve this we will get the answer in the form of 0.67. So, now similarly let us try to solve it for the bituminous coal. So, again the H by C ratio equal to by percent weight of carbon by its molecular weight. So, in bituminous coal if we see the percentage of hydrogen is given as 5 and the carbon percentage it is relatively higher than that of the biomass by its molecular weight. So, this ratio comes out to be around 0 0.71 and this concept we already discussed that the woody biomass relatively have lower carbon compared to that of the coal and hence the H by C ratio of woody biomass would be higher than that of the coal and that is what we also obtained the value in the similar line that the H by C ratio of coal is relatively lower than that of the woody biomass where the woody biomass has the H by C ratio of around 1.71 while for the coal the H by C ratio comes out to be around like 0 0.71 and that is mainly because it has more carbon content in its composition. Similarly, the O by C ratio again it is percent weight of oxygen by its molecular weight and percent weight of carbon by its molecular weight. Here again the oxygen percentage in the coal is quite low compared to that of the woody biomass. While if you see the composition of the woody biomass it has around 44 percent of the oxygen while in the coal it is just 9 percent. So, once we do this calculation we will get the value in the form of 0 0.08.
So, in this case also the O by C ratio of coal is quite low compared to that of the woody biomass and that is what we discuss also while discussing about the concept of woody biomass as well as the coal and when we discuss about their H by C ratio as well as the O by C ratio, we observe that the H by C and the O by C ratio of coal sample is quite low compared to that of the biomass and these two value also indicates the similar pattern and thus after analyzing this value the OD biomass observed to have higher H by C and O by C ratio than given coal sample. So, in OD biomass the molar proportion of C is to H is to O is 1 is to 1.71 is to point six seven and from this we can represent the the formula for OD biomass as C H 1.71 and O 0.67. So, in the similar line formula for bituminous coal can be presented as C H point seven one and O zero point zero it. So, as these two formulas were asked in this example to represent in the form of CHO. So, this is the representation of OD biomass and for the bituminous coal it can be represented in this way. So, I hope now this is clear how to calculate the H by C ratio and the O by C ratio from the given uh, composition. I would say the ultimate analysis composition of the given fuel sample and once we know the H by C and the O by C ratio then if it is asked to represent the formula in the form of CHO then we can easily represent the formula of the given fuel in the form of the CHO. So, now let us move on to the next example. So, this example is based on the one of the topic uh, discussed in the liquid fuel that is 
heating value of the liquid fuel and how to estimate this heating value from the given data. So, let us try to understand the given data in this example and then we will start solving this example. The lower heating value of ethanol, so here the liquid fuel is given as ethanol is 26,700 and it is given in kilojoule per kg. So, with the help of this value, we have to estimate the higher heating value of the fuel that is called as HHV as well. So, the higher heating value of the ethanol need to be estimated here and it is also in the form of kilojoule per kg and also this value we need to represent in the form of thermal unit per pound mass and the enthalpy of vaporization of water at 25 degree C is given as this much and we have to assume that the ethanol is at one atmospheric pressure and at 25 degree C. So, let us try to solve this example with the help of this given data. Lower heating value of ethanol is given as 26,700 kilojoule per kg and the enthalpy of vaporization of water that is represented in this form is given as 2442 kilojoule per kg and if we write down the combustion reaction of ethanol then it can be represented in this way. So, the ethanol is combusted will give the product in the form of right. So, saturatedly now this equation is also balanced and we consider here that the complete combustion of the ethanol is taking place. So, HHV of ethanol can be calculated as so for this we know the expression that is HHV is equal to LHV plus Q latent and we also discuss this concept while discussing the heating value and how to estimate the heating value of the given liquid fuel. So, the Q latent can be calculated using this expression. So, here this term is the mass of H2O formed per unit mass of fuel burn and it can be represented in the form of kg of H2O by kg of fuel. 
therefore HHV is equal to lower heating value plus the Q latent now will replace with the this equation and we will just simply try to replace the value in this equation now because the lower heating value of the ethanol is given as 26,700 kilojoule per kg and this mass of water form will be represented in this manner where if you see the stoichiometric equation of the ethanol we have just written uh, one slide before. So, in this case when the ethanol is completely combusted then it is producing almost 3 moles of water. So, 3 moles of water are getting produced with the combustion of 1 mole of ethanol and the enthalpy of vaporization of the water which is at 25 degree C is given as 2442. So, once we just solve this term here, we will get the value in the form of 29,567 kilojoule per kg because these are the value in the form of ratio of weight of the water to the weight of the fuel. So, this is higher heating value of given fuel sample in the form of kilojoule per kg and also it has been asked to calculate this higher heating value in the form of thermal unit per pound mass. So, one thermal unit is equal to this many British unit and which is equal to 105500 kilo joule. So, this is this is also one of the concept we discussed in one of the lecture where we discuss about the unit conversion system. So, that table can also be referred for this unit conversion and 1 pound equal to 4, 5, 3, 6 kg. So, now once we know this unit conversion, so we can easily calculate now the higher heating value in the form of thermal unit per pound mass. So, the heating value which is obtained from the given expression is in the form of 29,567 kilo joule per kg. So, now if you just try to convert this in the form of one thermal unit. So, first we will try to convert it into the British thermal unit and then after that we will convert the value in the one thermal unit so that we can get the value of HHV in the required form. 29567 which is kilo joule per kg and once we convert this into BTU, so it is around 1.055 kilo joule as we know this many British thermal unit is equal to this much kilo joule and even the pound conversion is 0.4536 per pound and once we 
do this multiplication, we will get the value in the form of 12710, it is in the British thermal unit per pound mass. Now, we know the conversion of British thermal unit to the thermal unit. So, the HHV can be represented or can be calculated in the following way like 29.5667 kilojoule per kg into 1 thermal unit equal to 105.50 kilojoule into again the pound the conversion is 0 0.4536 kilogram per pound mass and once we do this calculation, so it will come in the form of 0 0.1271 thermal unit per pound mass. Basically, uh, this particular calculation is not again required here, but just to explain you about this unit conversion system, I have just repeated this calculation from the above step because once we know the one thermal unit equal to this many BTU and we already estimated the HHV in the BTU per pound mass. So, we can simply convert this into thermal unit and we will get the value in the form of this answer. But just to explain you again about the unit conversion system like if the unit conversion system need to be utilized then how you can convert this value and we will get the answer in this form. So, I hope now this is clear how to estimate the high rating value if the low rating value and the latent heat of vaporization of the water is given. So, using these two terms you can easily calculate the HHV. So, the next example it is also in the similar line. So, here we have to calculate the high rating value of the coal sample that is solid fuel. So, for the calculation of this high rating value of this given fuel, the composition of the coal sample is given here. So, with the help of this composition, we need to estimate the high rating value of the coal. So, let us try to solve this another example on the similar concept. So, in this example, the composition of particular coal sample is given as follows. So, it contains around 68 percent carbon. 6 percent hydrogen, 16 percent oxygen followed by 1.5 percent nitrogen, 2.1 percent sulfur and 6.4 percent ash. So, with the help of this given data, we need to calculate the higher as well as the lower heating value of this coal sample. And if you remember in one of the lecture, we discuss about the estimation of higher heating value as well as the lower heating value of a given fuel if the composition of the fuel is known. So, we will be using the same concept here to estimate the higher heating value as well as the lower heating value of the given fuel and for that we required this table and if you recollect while discussing this table also I mentioned there that this table would be quite useful when we will try to estimate the high rating value as well as the lower rating value of a given fuel. Because for the estimation of this high rating value as well as the low rating value, we need to know the high rating value as well as the low rating value of this fuel phase. Let us try to solve this example. While discussing this concept, it was mentioned that the combustible components in coal are carbon, 
hydrogen and sulfur because once the combustion of the coal start so this component takes part in the combustion process and let x also represented as m suffix f be the mass fraction of carbon hydrogen and sulfur present in coal so now using the concept of ultimate analysis analysis and the data of this ultimate analysis is also given here in this example and heating values of standard components from the above table. So, these standard components and their heating values are already given here. So, once we use these two data that is ultimate analysis data which is given in the example and the heating value data in the form of high rating value as well as the low rating value of the standard component from this table, we can calculate the higher heating value of this sample using this equation. So, if you remember this x suffix c also as I mentioned it can be represented in the form of mass fraction of carbon and this also represents the mass fraction of carbon into the higher heating value of carbon plus x suffix h which we can also represent in the form of mass fraction of carbon into higher heating value of hydrogen plus into the higher heating value of sulfur because these three component will take part into the combustion process that is why this heating value is calculated using these three component. Now, once we replace the value of mass fraction of carbon which is 0 0.68, high rating value of the carbon is given as 32,800 32, and then the mass fraction of hydrogen is into its high rating value is 141 and the mass fraction of sulfur into so these values are given the unit terms of kilojoule per kg and after doing this multiplication the final answer comes out around 31,004 kilojoule per kg. So, this indicates the higher heating value of the given coal sample which is estimated using the composition of the coal as well as the heating value of the standard components. Similarly, now let us try to calculate the lower heating value of the coal sample. Lower heating value of coal sample
can be calculated using using following equation so it is in the similar line as that of the high rating value so again it is mass fraction of carbon into the low rating value of carbon plus mass fraction of hydrogen into the low rating value of hydrogen and then low rating value of the sulfur as the mass fraction of the carbon is known and the low rating value of carbon can be obtained from the above table which is plus the hydrogen and here the low rating value of the hydrogen is given as and sulfur and its low rating value is same. So, after doing this multiplication the final answer is 6 it is kilojoule per kg. So, this indicates the low rating value of the given coal sample. So, this is another simple example using the concept of ultimate analysis how to estimate the low rating value as well as the high rating value of the given sample. So, I hope this is clear now how to estimate low rating value as well as the high rating value of the given sample if its composition is known and also the low rating value as well as the high rating value of this component need to be given. So, once we know these values using this expression of LHV as well as HHV we can easily calculate the HHV as well as the LHV value of the given sample. With this uh, we will end our lecture here and in the next lecture we will practice few more example on some concept which we could not able to cover uh, in this lecture. So, we will practice few more example on the concept discussed in the module 2. Thank you.